Okay, the subject of today's video, which is just going to be a brief video, is this Bradley guitar that I'm guessing was manufactured sometimes in the 70s or 80s. I believe it was manufactured in Nagoya, Japan. What Bradley was was a house brand for Venomans Music. It was a big music store here in the Washington metropolitan area. This was their house brand. So anyway, the goal here is just to try to make this guitar somewhat playable. It is a student model. Um, we can see the uh, fretboard is very dried out. So we're going to clean the frets up a little bit and treat the fingerboard. We're going to have to break the tuners back in. These are sealed tuners, so they're not serviceable. Several of them are loose, the hardware is loose, and they've got tight spots, and there's really nothing you can do to lube these things up. So I'm just going to wind them up and see if I can break them loose and get past the, the rough spots. The uh, frets, as we can see, have some small divots, really thin fret wire. We're going to clean those up with some steel wool and just try to make this guitar playable. It's a student model. They made a higher end called Nagoya, which was also sold at Venomans. And those were made more off of actual Martin specs and were actually great guitars from what I've read. Although I've never seen one in person. So let's see what we can do to get some sounds out of this thing. First of all, I've already de-strung the guitar as we can see. Someone had tied the non-wound strings around the posts. My advice to anyone is don't do that. You're going to make it hard on yourself. You're going to make it hard on the next person that has to restring the guitar. We've got a new set of strings, Ernie Balls. And they are not acoustic guitar strings, but it doesn't matter. The strings on here were extremely heavy, which doesn't suit me. And it doesn't suit this guitar because it makes it extremely hard to play. Certainly among other things. We're going to try to improve that a bit. We've got... Dunlop fingerboard cleaner and conditioner, quadruple lot steel wool to clean up those frets. Let's see what we can make of this thing. Okay, let's take another look at our Bradley guitar. Shiny frets and clean and treated fretboard. Looking good. We ran into some problems with these tuning machines. I don't know what happened, whether these corroded over time, but these, a couple of these have actually broken off. And there it goes. A couple of these had actually broken off in the headstock. It sort of looks like they corroded, but there's no sign of water damage to the guitar, so it's really a mystery what happened to these things. I tried to remove one and replace parts that I had from my parts bin, but that didn't work out too well. So you can see I did replace one of the tuning machines, but it has an offset anchor, so that's just a temporary fix. I'm not going to go make an extra holes in this thing. If it's at all playable, I might just replace all of them with the appropriate tuners. So the next step is going to be to throw some strings on this thing and see how it plays. It's not a bad looking rosewood fretboard there. I assume it's rosewood. I can't see any reason why it wouldn't be for guitar made in this era. Okay, so we've got our strings installed and what we're looking at now is these tuning machines. Every single one of the original tuning machines is broken, just like the ones that I showed previously. All right, we got it all tuned up. So as we can see, the guitar is playing okay. It needs some improvement. It needs some work. The tuning machines need to be replaced, and I would say it needs a neck adjustment. There's a bit of a bow going on. There's obviously too much relief, and that's causing the string action to get thrown off on the upper frets here. But we'll save that for another video. I'd like to thank you for watching this video, and as always, 
I'll catch you on down the road.